Hello and welcome to my tech fund. Philatikun sent me glass reinforced PLA for the testing. And I already tested different spools from the Philatikum and the most interesting was the engineering PLA, which has great mechanical properties and it can withstand the temperature up to 150 degrees Celsius without annealing. And also they have a semi-flex PLA, so they can do really incredible things from the PLA filaments. Now I'm curious about this uh, glass reinforced PLA. And uh, first I thought that uh, great uh, glass reinforced, usually this uh, carbon fiber or glass fibers helps uh, with uh, less deformation during the annealing. And I thought it's good to try to annealing of this filament, but actually by default it can withstand the temperature up to 100 degrees Celsius according to the website. Now also according to the website they said that this is not important, we can use any nozzle. But I contacted the company and actually they told me that uh, it is not so abrasive like carbon fibers, but definitely it is better if I use some kind of harder nozzle. And uh, 0.6 mm is also recommended to reduce the risk of the clogging. So I will use this uh, Bontech uh, Bimetal, which I presented a few weeks ago. And uh, I know with this uh, nozzle, it is hardened inside and uh, copper outside. I don't have to raise the temperature, the printing temperature. But if you are using a regular hardened steel nozzle, in that case, especially with the 0.6 mm nozzle, you have to raise the temperature 20 degrees Celsius or sometimes even more. Okay, let's see what's inside. It's in this uh, white or transparent color. And um, I can see this is not vacuum packaging and there is no silica gel inside. And I mentioned this uh, several times. They told me that PLA is not so sensitive to moisture. It's true, like not like other uh, filaments, but definitely it would be better if this filament would be drier too. Sometimes I experience some more stringing even with the PLA filaments. Not much information on the spool. I can see here the date of the manufacturing and uh, that this is uh, glass reinforced uh, PLA, but uh, it would be good to see I know, recommended print temperatures or weight of the empty spool, maybe some kind of scale here on the spool, but uh, basically we can find this information on their website. And um, now I have to change the nozzle. I will print everything on Prusa Mark 3S, of course with open door because this is uh, PLA, only I have to change the nozzle to this uh, Bontech B-Metal. The start is good. Recommended print temperature is between 190 and 220 degrees Celsius, but this temperature tower I will start from 230 degrees Celsius down to 190. I'm just curious because this is still some kind of hardened steel nozzle, but it is a CHTB metal, so theoretically it has the uh, same printing possibilities like a brass nozzle. It's printing the last element on the temperature tower and I can see it's not completely dried, uh, quite noticeable stringing or even on 220 and 210 degrees Celsius. Mm, later I'll try to dry it a little bit and I will reprint some elements of this temperature tower. Printing is finished, bed adhesion check, which is good, like regular PLA and I will wait until bed cools down, print surface cooled down. And partly thanks to the glass fibers, uh, great overhang and bridging properties, um, but only the problem is that stringing. Now I will try to dry this filament maybe 2 hours or 50 degrees Celsius, and I will reprint maybe these 2 or 3 elements. This is everyone's nail, but don't be confused, I don't really like this. The only advantage is that it is quiet, but this exit of the filament at a 90 degree angle is, is horrible. So I don't really understand, they never try this, so the exit of the filament for free dryer must be tangential. I lost my patience, so I switched to good old uh, Isan's uh, e-box slide, where this exit of the filament is much smoother. That's Isan e-box slide, uh, the maximum is approximately 50 degrees Celsius inside, but for drying this uh, PLA it will be enough. And I will try to dry it approximately two hours, but after one hour I will rotate the spool 180 degrees so it will be dried more equally. This is the same G-code and even on the first element I can see that there will be less stringing. Printing is finished and now let's compare them side by side. And this was very short quick drying on 50 degrees Celsius and I can see huge difference in between these two objects. So definitely yes, if you want to use this filament, uh, use some cheapest dryer you can buy and you will get much nicer results. I'm printing all test objects at once and uh, this is now the third layer. I'm printing on 220 degrees Celsius. Everything is okay so far. 
last subjects for the layer adhesion test and I want to show you that uh, there is almost no stringing so definitely the drying helps. And it is time to start the mechanical testing with these horizontally printed test subjects. Small cross-section is 4 by 4 millimeters. Well, this is not a good sign because if I see a break like this, I can recognize this means a weaker layer adhesion. But this will be my next testing, so let's check it. So these test subjects are printed in the vertical position with same smaller cross-section area of 4 by 4 millimeters. Unfortunately, it's something what I expected, so maybe even if I use that CHT nozzle, but it is still 0.6 mm, so probably I should raise this print temperature even more. But uh, following the recommended print settings, this is the result. I couldn't stop here, so I reprinted those two test objects for the layer adhesion test on 240 degrees Celsius. And I repeated the test, and 13.1 uh, was a little bit stronger, but still very weak. And now two-sided shear test. Looks like the glass fiber helps in this kind of stress because this was stronger than average PLA. Uh, but of course the glass fibers are now perpendicular to this uh, surface and direction of the shear stress. Now the torque or twist test and in theory the glass fibers are oriented correctly now because this was printed in this horizontal position. But on the other side we have that weaker layer adhesion, so I'm not sure what to expect here. The regular PLA should have the load of approximately 1.3, 1.4 newton meters on that 90 degree rotation. It's already broken. 0 0.5 was the peak. Unfortunately, glass fibers couldn't help here because we have that weaker layer adhesion. And now three-point bending test and the distance between supports is 50 millimeters. And now we add these loads one by one and now we measure the deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. This is speed up video. The load is 1.25 kilograms, 2.5, 5 kilograms and 10 kilograms and removing of the load and the object is perfectly straight. No visual deformation on it. And now the eyes at impact test with this notch test object and the half kilogram hammer and let's see if those glass fiber helps with the toughness of this material or it is brittle like any other PLA filament. Glass fiber PLA zero position. It's hard to follow with the bare eyes, but I think it's a little bit tougher material than the regular PLA, but let's analyze the footage. This is the scale, and this is the zero position of the hammer, and this is after breaking the glass fiber PLA. And using this equation, we can calculate the breaking energy. And now the creep test, the deformation under the constant load. And again, now we have two test objects here. The first one is the glass reinforced PLA and the other is just a regular PLA from my previous video. I'm locking the position for more accurate measuring and I'm measuring the distance between two reference surfaces and so far the glass reinforced PLA is uh, better, smaller deformation. And this is day 6, uh, already measured, I'm removing the loads here. And this is the permanent deformation after 15 minutes. And now the temperature test in the oven, where I want to record the temperature of the first deformation. And I will follow the temperature with this uh, cooking thermometer. M10 nut as a small load is placed on this object. And interesting, first I noticed some deformation of the plate below it. But uh, the sinking of the object I noticed on 108 degrees Celsius approximately. I stopped the experiment on 120 degrees Celsius because I want to see how soft is this uh, object and it is flexible, so soft, but not so soft like other regular PLAs on 80 degrees Celsius and only after one minute it became completely hard.
Now let's analyze the data in this Excel table, which you can download from mytechfund.com website. And I will include here some values for average PLA. You know, I have that uh, summary table for my Patreon supporters. And I calculate some values from all PLA filaments I tested so far. Let's start with the creep test. And uh, this is the measured value distance between two reference surfaces. But the difference between two days can be seen here or on this graph. Zero means no creeping. And we can see it on day two, it almost stopped with the creeping, but it has some minimal deformation even on day six. But I already checked the numbers, so this is better than average PLA. On tensile test, it performed very badly because of that delamination. And then, and most important, uh, I did the layer adhesion test. And it, since it performed very bad, this is very weak. Uh, so I reprinted those test objects uh, for the layer adhesion test on 240 degrees Celsius, so 10 degrees Celsius above the maximal recommended print temperature. And even then, uh, still below 20 kilograms. But for average PLA, I should get almost 40 kilogram layer adhesion break load. The shear stress, well, in this case, those glass fibers helped, and uh, this was better than average PLA. The bending, again, those glass fibers are oriented in correct direction, perpendicular to this uh, load, and it performed better. Smaller values means less deformation, and uh, it can be seen here on this graph, where I have the deformation after 130 and 60 seconds under these loads. And here you can see that uh, gray is glass fiber PLA. Smaller values are better compared to the average PLA. On torque or twist tests, they perform very badly because of that delamination again. On impact tests, again, those orientation of the glass fibers help, so it performed better than the average PLA. And here it shines uh, also, so approximately 180 degrees Celsius, it started with deformation. Average PLA should start with deformation between 50 and 55 degrees Celsius without annealing, of course. And now quick conclusions for the end. Uh, two most important things which I didn't like about this filament. First, it has to be dried out of the box. And the second is that uh, weaker layer adhesion. Even if I try to raise the temperature above recommended maximum temperature range, it has quite weak layer adhesion. So this means that we have to keep this in mind when we design our products. It has to be stronger along the z-axis. Two things which I like the most about this filament. Uh, first, uh, if the load is perpendicular to those glass fibers, bending test you saw in the creep test in that case uh, it performs better than the regular PLA and the second is that uh, temperature resistance is so approximately 110 20 degrees Celsius so this is far above the regular PLA and don't forget this is without annealing if you have some additional experience with it you know two lines in the comment section thank you for watching and happy printing